Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Well, my name is Mokhash Berisham, as you have heard my voice for these two years. And as you know, when we started this channel, the YouTube channel, and also my, my Facebook page, the aim was to help students to prepare for PhD contest. Of course, I was trying to motivate them and try to show that this endeavor is not impossible. Uh, I tried to share my expertise, of course, as a university teacher, uh, but most importantly, as a former student. However, in the span of these two years, I really realized that the problem goes deeper than just an exam. I mean, it's a problem that has to do with writing skills. So this is why uh, many times on my online meeting, I try to focus on this uh, on this aspect now of course i have as you if you follow me on my facebook page i have announced my first virtual classroom and it is free uh, the registration is still open so you can register for that and uh, what i'm trying to do and why this is the new set i'm trying to really make this channel advance more i try to provide more content now i would like really to to help even university students of english first year second year not only master two or master one student because i believe that if you want really to be uh, to be a doctor that needs to start from the day one i mean the first year university because you really need to focus on your writing skills you don't want to be just that average student but you have to push yourself to be the best so this is what it's all about this channel of course we have today a video concerning and how you, how you can categorize uh, questions i would like to cover so many questions that uh, you have seen in the recent years so really i would like to thank you so much for your all the support for the emails that you have sent me for the questions uh, and I would like you to help this community to grow bigger by inviting your friends, sharing this link. So today's video is, as I told you, is about categorizing questions. So let's start. Now, when the PhD contest in Algeria started for students of English, that I think was around 2013, students going to these kind of exams simply did not have any clues about the questions they are going to face. I have passed that exam in 2015 and I found really little examples of questions. And even when I passed that exam, the questions I faced, they were not familiar. Luckily now, years have passed. And if one is to decide to sit for these exams, he or she would find so many examples. Actually, for the sake of this video, I have gathered more than 50 questions from 2013 and uh, to 2022. Now, these questions cover a wide range of topics from methodology, didactics, ESP. Sadly, though, they are not related to civilization and literature, as these two are not my major, which makes me unqualified to talk about them. However, since we are working on the product, which is language, and I do believe that there are some similarities, but still because of the because of how civilization and literature are taught, I, so I do believe that you need to consult a teacher who is a specialist in that. Now, I do have this strong belief that if a student is able to write an essay for each question in his or her preparation, the chances of winning will improve. So, because, see, these questions comprise, dif comprise different concepts, ideas, tri tricks, strategies. By answering each one, you ensure that you are covering as much as possible uh, scenarios and ideas. Back in the days when I decided to take, ex to take this exam, I have collected 100 questions from different universities, most of which are not Algerian. The idea was for me to be familiar on how to write. Of course, I did not write essays for all of them, but I focus on writing introduction. You see, I wanted to know how to write or at least how to start any topic. Now, at least when I read a question, I should be able, this is what I decided, I should be able to, to tell what is the answer, that basic short answer to address the question. Let me give you, for example, you will be asked to write, for example, about the characteristic of ESP in a in an essay now you but still 
basically you need to know that short answer so for example you know you should at least know the main characteristics so we say say for example esp is normally goal directed the esp is course developed from a needs analysis so equipped with these two with these two sentences you are able to develop further further uh, an essay using of course your previously uh, known information so let us try to see an example of how one can categorize question let's let's start for example the question of last year in Iran 2022 so we have needs analysis is a defining of not the defining characteristic of ESP we have this Hollick describes needs analysis as the classical procedure by which a close link can be established between learners and curricula the selection of objective is based on the particular communicative needs of groups or individual learners. In the light of the quotation above, discuss the importance of needs analysis for designing a learner-centered syllabus that is based on the students' needs and wants. As you see here in these questions, we have like so many concepts, and you may feel that it's only about ESP, but in fact, it is more than that. So if we try to devise or at least to see what are the concepts we of course basically we have needs analysis we have it's not if not the defining characteristics so there is a kind of a talk about the characteristics here and it takes us to curricula take us to learners and take us to learner centered so we need to find we kind of make some kind of uh, folders and in, in, in which we try to categorize and see how where this question is fit for example as we said it is linked to esp however now we have the mid word curricula means that it's going to take us to at least to say to define it to say what the content and what are the characteristics of the curricula now it takes us to didactics it takes us to learner centeredness and of course also take us kind of approaches so although it may feel that's only about esp in fact it is not it's more than that so this is a way of trying to categorizing a question of course the, what we want to do is try to try always to to move to other questions and see if there are also other similarities for example in this next question we have the grammar translation method was seriously challenged by the emergence of the direct method at the artist of the 20th century discussed innovation brought by the latter this question i mean i when i saw it i said oh, oh dear i mean this is seems so over yet still i think this was last year and still we have this question so this question is trying to assess whether students has the basics not methods and and methods and approaches so it's the same thing i mean we can still put this uh, question we can put it with either learner centered this in a kind of a way of comparing um it can maybe it has the related to esp but not in a direct way because the esp still draws from draws from uh draw from um, didactics and we have also curricula appro and approaches of, which is really uh, directly related so in this way we try to move from here from a question to a question trying to really get familiar with the different concepts involved in each one of them and as as i said if you remember from my la from my last video from my, from my last video and you should check out that if you haven't so far that this step it has to be done at once i mean you should not stop one if you stop because what we are doing here we trying to be to have this kind of a look to have a broad view of all the questions and see how they are related now of course we need to categorize that with approaches and we can see another question for example here so what's the relationship between an approach and method and a technique in a foreign language learning illustrate your definition with practical examples of classroom application i mean this question also I, I think it was a last year question, that's a new question. I mean, it's not something from 2014 or 2020. So it has also direct link to, to approaches. So we categorize this one with, uh, with this folder. So in this way, we are really ensuring that we are covering so many concepts. And I think by the end of the process, what you are going to have, you are going to have either different folders if you try to go with the folder technique 
So for example, you are going to know how to talk about data collection, valuation, learn a central to CSP, technology, blended learning, curricula. Before I end this video, I would like to first to tell you that I don't want you to write at this stage. All what you need to do is try to get familiar with the question, you try to categorize them, you try to play with them, but don't try, don't just start uh, from now writing. This is something that we are going to do in the next stage. Now, of course, I would really like to thank you so much for your attention. You are going to find uh, all what I have spoken about concerning the questions and also the 100 questions I told you about. They are going to be available with links so you can download and you can play with them uh, too. So really, again, thank you so much for your attention. Please share and subscribe to this channel and see you on my next video. Shall I?